In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my Z cam rig. I'm going to be showing you guys how I build the camera for solo operation, mostly handheld shooting scenarios. So yeah, let's get right into it. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Mako and I like to make videos about how I make videos. So if this type of content interests you, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and stick around for more content like this. Like I said in the intro of this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how I build out my Zcam E2 F6 for mostly solo operation handheld shooting. If you guys don't know, I love to shoot handheld. I shoot 99% of the time handheld because I just love that raw handheld gritty look. So just keep in mind the way that I'm going to be building out my camera here today is going to be based completely around my style of shooting. So like I said, I shoot primarily handheld. So that's how we're going to build the rig out today. We're going to build up this camera. We're going to make it nice and big, nice and heavy. We're going to try to keep it very minimalistic and as clean as possible, but also try to keep it very practical and easy to use as a solo operator. So before I show you guys how I build out my rig, just know that everything that you will see here in this video will be linked in the description down below. And if you purchase anything at all through those links, I do get a very small piece of commission through those sales and any purchase that you guys make is greatly appreciated here by myself because as a freelancer and a small content creator here on YouTube, every penny helps guys and I gotta put food on the table somehow so I just wanted to drop that here so you guys know that yeah, if you purchase anything from the links down below, I do get a very small commission and it is very, very much appreciated. Before we go any further, I do wanna mention saltyscameras.com. If you are looking to purchase a Z cam or any accessories for your Z cam, make sure to head over to saltyscameras.com. He offers extremely fast, very reliable shipping, and he also has some of the best customer service that I have ever dealt with in my entire life, and I'm not even making that up. So head to Salty's Cameras if you're looking for some Z cam stuff, and uh, yeah, let's get into building out this rig. So here's my Zcam E2 F6. This is the full frame 6K flagship camera from Zcam and I have it sitting inside of a Nitsi cage. A majority of the components here on the rig today come from this company Nitsi and guys I cannot recommend this company enough. Their stuff is fantastic and it's very affordable. I have a standard Manfrotto quick release plate on the bottom of the camera and on the back side I have the Nitsi V-mount quick release adapter for Zcams. I have a little stubby antenna for when I want to use the Zcam's Wi-Fi features and control the camera with my phone or an iPad or something. To protect the ports that I don't use on a regular basis, I have these custom covers made by a guy named Peter. I'll leave his links down in the description below. And then I have this small NPF style battery inside the back of the camera at all times so I can hot swap my V-mounts and you guys will see that later on. I have a right side hand grip from Revolver Labs. This is their clutch side handle designed specifically for the Z-Cam cameras. And man, this addition right here is crucial if you own a Z-Cam. You can control a ton of functions. It adds so much practicality to the camera. It's almost a must have in my opinion. If you guys don't have a multi-tool in your bag, I don't know what you're doing, but this thing saves my life so much. I'm just using this tool to tighten down my clutch side handle onto the rosette mount, locking it in place, offering a very nice sturdy support. I use these little cable management clips from Sprig. I absolutely love these things because they screw right into any quarter 20 mounting points and it makes it very easy for you to, you know, loop a cable through there, keep it clean, neat, out of the way. And I just absolutely love these things. I can't recommend them enough. I keep a couple of these sprigs on the right side of my camera because I like to run all of my cables down the right side so that way there nothing is obstructing me on the left side of my camera while I'm out shooting because the last thing that I want to do is accidentally unplug one of my cables while I'm out shooting so everything goes on the right side to keep it nice and neat. This next piece is just a top NATO rail with two built-in 15 millimeter rods and I slap this on top of the camera so that way there if I ever need top rods for a follow focus or you know, to mount anything extra to the camera. I have that option there ready to go at all times. And then it is also a NATO rail so I can slide on my top handle as you guys will see here very soon. 
So this is a two pin Limo cable to D-tap and I use this to power my camera from V-mount batteries so that way there I have power all day long. Once the power cable is plugged in, now we gotta add the V-mount plate. This one's from Nitsi. It's got two D-tap outs and two DC outs. I have it connected to their quick release SSD adapter and I absolutely love this feature. I'll show you guys why I love it later. But on the bottom of this adapter, we do have two more sprig cable clamps and we're just gonna slap this onto the back of the camera. Then we're gonna take that power cable and run it through those two sprig clamps to keep that power cable nice and neat on the bottom side of the camera. Since this cable is kind of long, I like to just kind of loop it around the left side and plug it into the left side D-tap. So this next piece is a custom made 3D printed electronic ND holder for the Zcam END module. A guy named Braden actually designed this and Peter, the guy that makes the back ports that I mentioned earlier, printed this for me. And yeah, this thing is a lifesaver. I don't have to worry about forgetting my END or the clear module when I don't need ND. It's always just right there on the back of my camera. Next we have the Nitsi quick release base plate. I'm actually pretty stoked on this one because I helped design it, but it's just a standard 501 Manfrotto quick release plate with two built-in 15 millimeter rod clamps. We're gonna slide this onto the bottom of the rig so that way there, when you don't need rods, it's very easy to take off. When you do need them, you just slide it right in, tighten it down, and you're ready to go. Next, I'm gonna add this little hot shoe adapter piece to the right side of the camera for when I need to run a shotgun microphone for scratch audio. I'm gonna screw it right in here on the right side to the 3 8 adapter threads. And yeah, we're just gonna tighten that down with the multi-tool so that way there it's nice and secure. And as you guys can see here, everything is starting to look nice and neat. The camera is starting to come together. It's starting to look like an actual rig. And the next thing that we're going to add is my HDMI cable. We're gonna pop that into the back of the camera there and then run it through those two sprig cable clamps that I put on the right side of the camera. And then we're going to add this DC power cable for my port keys BM5 monitor. Again, we're gonna plug that into the right side of the V-mount plate and then run it through those two sprig cable clamps. And this is why I absolutely love these little sprig cable clamps. It just keeps everything so neat and clean and so professional. I can't recommend these things enough. This is the Stinger top handle from Nitsi, and guys, this is the best top handle I've ever used. It is so comfortable. There's so many mounting options. You really cannot go wrong with this top handle. I have a NATO quick release monitor mount slapped on the front side upside down because I like to put a NATO rail on the bottom of my monitor so that way there I can just quickly slide it on and off as needed. But if we turn the rig here, guys, look how nice that handle is. It just shifts the center of gravity of the rig to exactly where you need it and shooting handheld with with this top handle is just such a dream and it feels so good. Lately I've been using this Port Keys BM5 Mark III monitor. It's five and a half inches. It's extremely bright. It's built like an absolute tank and yeah I love it. No complaints so far. I have a little small rig NATO quick release plate on the bottom so I can slide it onto the front of the handle right there and now I have my monitor mounted nice and quick and if I need to take it off it's very very simple. Next, we're gonna add the Mikey 35 millimeter T2.1 full frame cine lens. I just recently picked this lens up and I have absolutely been loving this thing, guys. If you're interested in seeing some more content about this, make sure to subscribe because I'll be dropping some videos in the near future. I like to shoot with two 15 millimeter rods through the base plate of the system because I like to use it as a base of support for when I'm shooting handheld. Instead of holding directly onto the lens, I hold onto the rods and it just takes out more of those micro jitters, keeps the shots looking very stable. Next up, we gotta add the matte box. This is the ProAim MB10. I recently made a video about this. You guys can check it out on my channel. We're just gonna slap this onto the front of the rig so that way there if I need to add an extra ND filter or some diffusion, we got that ready to rock and roll. I've been using this micro V-mount battery from Kame TV. I have some gaff tape over the sticker because I just think it's ugly and I don't wanna look at it. So yeah, this is 99 watt hours. I love it. I love the size of it. I think it looks great on the rig. And yeah, I have no complaints with this battery at all. Lastly, I use the Rode NTG Go shotgun microphone for when I need to capture some scratch audio. I have it inside of this small rig shotgun mount that I can slide into the cold shoe mount that I have on the right side of the camera. I love this microphone because you can adjust the gain with the scroll wheel on the back of the shotgun and you can also record a safety track to the left channel so that way there if your audio peaks, you got a backup. I keep this set of Apple headphones wrapped up and clamped on the right side of my rig. I just tuck these into one of my Sprig cable clamps for when I need to monitor audio on set. 
And that is how I build my Zcam. What I really love about the Zcam system is just how versatile their cameras can be. Since they are these small little cube shaped cameras, you can either keep them small and compact for when you need a small and compact camera, or you can build it out to be bigger to accommodate your shooting style or your production or whatever you need for that day. So since I like to shoot handheld 99% of the time, I want my camera to be bigger, I want it to be heavier because the heavier your camera is, the less micro jitters that you have in your footage and the more cinematic that handheld movement looks throughout your film. The way I have my camera built is a very good starting base, I would say, because if I need to add anything like a wireless transmission system or a wireless follow focus or a second monitor, anything like that, I can just add on top of what's already there and I don't really have to change around much of anything. So that is why I build out my camera the way that I do. And I hope you guys found this video interesting. I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already and uh yeah i think that's gonna wrap it up for this one so catch you guys later peace